time they did it, it was a deliverance. It was actually delivering them, delivering me also to watching it. The art of letting go. Many times it is difficult. Did you see how trying to grasp that, hold it on? Because we get so comfortable with hurts, with unforgiveness. We get so comfortable with these things. It's like sleeping with the enemy. So, Michael, we could turn on the PowerPoint. Thank you so much, Michael. I want to thank God for Michael. He makes everything seamless, and I thank God for him. Thank you, Lord. The art of letting go. It is a difficult process sometimes, but when you let go of things that are holding you back, you feel free. When I first looked at that storage unit, and I'm going to show you a picture of it, and, <laughs> and Bill knows because he, he helped me, and apostles gave us permission to do it. When I looked at it, I said, Lord, how am I going to sell? I didn't say get rid of. Because in my mind is business. We could sell it. Okay? How am I? Some stuff we gave away. How am I going to empty this out? It was packed with, and there was a small row in the center that you can get to the back. But the back was also filled too. And little by little, step by step, one step at a time, we got rid of everything and I'll show you a picture of it when um, uh, it's at the end of my PowerPoint presentation the art of letting go it is finished now I want you to see this for a minute I don't know if you can see that you see that guy there he's wrapped up in a snake where's the head can anybody see where the head is where no there is look at the arrow It's under his feet. So many times we feel like we are being strangled by things we need to let go of when all he had to do was shrug his shoulders. There was no head holding that on. There's no power in the enemy unless we give him permission. Okay? God is a God of wisdom. Satan is the God of stupid. I'm not trying to minimize his power, but the only power he has is if you give it to him. If I give it to him. Okay. You can go to the next one. Okay. That is a scripture, Philippians. That'll be through the whole thing that we do today. Okay. Um, is anybody having a hard time seeing that? With me here? You just got to look past me. <laughs> okay, go to the next one. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about a mindset. A mindset that keeps you fixed in the past or keeps you growing in the future. Next slide. This was so profound to me when Holy Spirit said this to me. What or who are you fueling from your past that is destroying your destiny? Fueling, which means you walk up to the pump in your mind and say, my father, my mother, my husband, my society, where I grew up, told me that. So I'm fueling it by thinking of it. Just like that storage unit, 170 something dollars, the Jewish in me hated that. When it would come to the presbytery meeting, I would say, we're paying $175 for stuff that we haven't used. It, it just bothered me. It was like throwing money away. Do you ever notice in Pasco County how many storage units there is? Yep. Yes. Every corner has a storage unit. That is a prophetic sign 
that we are holding on to too much. I could see you using a storage unit for a couple of months until you get your house ready. But when stuff is in a storage unit laying dormant, it turned out that there was mold through that whole storage unit. Gail and I had to wear masks to go through that stuff. When we let stuff go and do not let it go, when we let it, when we, when we procrastinate, and, not, and I'm not saying apostles procrastinated because they had all intentions of bringing that stuff out, okay? This is nothing against apostles. This was just a conviction because Holy Spirit said, if you do not let go of that, how can you ask me for a new building? So I was on a mission from God. My business went dormant for three, four weeks. Didn't sell any furniture, didn't do any furniture, just focused on this. I think Apostle called me like a bulldog or a bulldozer. I don't know what it was. Either one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I've been called that many times before. Pitbull, sumo wrestler, you name it. It's a, it's a compliment. <laughs> what are you fueling? What or who are you fueling? From, that's right, Kathleen, from your past that is destroying your destiny. Because when you're listening to the past, when you're looking towards the past, you cannot see forward. See, letting go will not be so hard if you know what's ahead of you. Then I know everything else is excess baggage. Baggage. And excess baggage weighs us down. Okay, you can go on to the next one, Michael. Oh, this was so... Can, anybody, can everybody see this? There's a gravestone, but then there's a guy sitting in a grave. He dug that up. Let me move over here just a tiny bit. Okay? Every time you listen to what your father said to you, natural, your husband, your mother, your society, your school, your education, every time you listen to them above the word of God... You are digging up a grave. You are digging up and making that grave more valid than the now word of God. So when you have in your mind, well, my father told me, which he didn't, my natural father, you'll never amount to anything. But even when I was doing karate, you are way too heavy to be able to do karate. No, I had a heart to do it. I was not going to dig up. So in my mind, I kept on hearing, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. I was digging up. I was taking a shovel and digging up all that stuff from the past. This guy got arrested for digging up a grave. He really didn't see the police officer? It's against the law to dig up a grave in the natural. Are we hearing this prophetic? It is against the law to dig up a grave in the natural. So what gives me, you, permission to dig up a grave in the spiritual? We should be arrested. Actually, we are. When we do that, we pick up those chains that Carolyn was describing. You notice she didn't want to let him go? We get so comfortable with our unforgiveness. We could be, have unforgiveness from 40 years ago that our father said to us. The man is dead and gone. Give it up and allow Holy Spirit to heal you, to tell you who your true identity is. Don't be digging up graves. That's going to be my new saying in counseling. Holy Spirit said to me the other day, Marion, what if you changed your counseling that after the first session, nobody was allowed to talk about their past? I think that's a great idea. Isn't it, Apostle? Maybe give them two to be delivered. If they don't get it the first time, second time, but after the second thing of counseling, no talking about it. I'm going to leave a shovel right by, right by the, the desk when Apostle and I 
And every time they bring up the past, you got to deal with what you dig up. Okay, you can go to the next one. Are you fueling your history at the expense of your destiny? See, you were created by God for such awesome stuff. Incredible stuff is ahead of you. The thing that you went through that caused you heartache and agony is the thing that's going to propel you yes. towards your destiny yes. in Christ. Yes. Don't you know that it's a setup? Yes. It was never meant to destroy you. Losing my husband was never meant to destroy me. Losing your mother, your father, your child was never meant to destroy you. It was meant to make you stronger and bring you forward in Christ Jesus towards your destiny. See, the enemy knows that you have a destiny in Christ Jesus. He knows it because Jesus is in you. That's why he fights against you so hard. He makes himself so big and bad. He is not big and bad. Do not be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of Satan. He's stupid. Compared to God, he is stupid. And I'm not tempting him by saying it. I'm calling what he is. To be prideful in the, in the presence of God and think he's more important than God, that's stupidity. Uh, you go to the next one. When you know what is ahead of you, it is easy to let go of what is behind you. A lot of this stuff is written on your paper. When you know what is in front of you, when you know what is in front of you is more important than what's behind you, you will have no problem letting go. You will say, thank you, Jesus, I don't need it anymore. If I ain't used it in six months, if I have not used it in six months, I don't need it in my closet, in my drawer. See, all this has got to have a practical. After today, you need to look at what is in your house that has been there that is cluttering up your house. Because when your house is cluttered, your mind is cluttered. Natural, spiritual, spiritual, natural. 1 Kings 18.21. He gave this to me on Sunday morning. Okay? Okay. Now, Ahab had took the prophets of Baal. Elijah had took our prophets. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if not, if Baal, then follow him. This was, this, I never saw this before in this scripture. And the people answered him, not a word. Do you know not answering not a word is a decision in itself? Indecision is a decision that says no. Wait a minute. That's why procrastination is so deadly in the kingdom of God. Because it's delaying the manifestation of his glory upon this earth. Because we, we become afraid. You can go to the next one, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to go to Samuel 9. And this is a scriptural example. It's Old Testament. There are many in New Testaments. And you have those scriptures on your paper there. Yes. Now, this, this um, scripture is about Saul. Now, we all know about the bad guy Saul, okay, that he did a witch, he consulted with a witch, whatever. But this is how he started. He started with God, and pride came in, one of those boxes, one of those things we hold on to. Okay, so nine. Um, so I'm just, Saul... Was it was a choice young man? He was a mighty man of power. It says in verse one and two. 
it says, among the children of Israel, there was not a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders upward, he was higher than any of the other people. So this was a really, really great guy. Integrity, character, and everything. His father had asses, donkeys. Okay, if asses offend you, it's in the word. King Jameth. So, so he, he loses the asses. And his father sends him and a servant to go find the asses. He goes, and you'll see from... Um, verse 4, 5, 6. He goes into every city looking for these asses. And Holy Spirit said to me, Marion, how many things do you go from place to place, emotion, emotion, day to day, looking for something that is right there in front of you? See, he was so focused on the asses, he was so focused on that mission that God underlying had a mission that was so far greater. Because he met up with the prophet Samuel. See, devastating things in your life lead to prophetic destiny. Yes. Wow. Don't get lost in the devastation. Stop pitching your tent in the dead. Stop getting a storage unit with boxes yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Not physical stuff, but could be physical stuff. Okay? I remember when I was going through my house, I had this big picture of Mark and I on our wedding day. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was gigantic. And I looked at it, and I put it aside to save it. And Holy Spirit said, what are you saving it for? I said, it's a beautiful picture. I had other beautiful pictures. He said, can you throw it away? I said, why? I said, that is, that is such a beautiful picture. He said, take a picture of it with your phone and throw that picture away. So I still have the memory but I don't need the thing. I'm just going to seal off for of that just for a minute. I don't need the thing. For many years, I wore my wedding, wedding ring. Every time I looked at it, it made me sad. It was a thing. It wasn't my covenant. It wasn't my husband. So Holy Spirit told me, I'm not saying that to anybody else, he told me, it's time to take that off. And that's what I did. That's personally for me. He speaks to me different than he speaks to you. Okay, and that's not a condemnation to anybody. Okay? Um, go on to the next one, Michael. Thank you so much. Okay, some nuts and bolts. How do I know when I need to let go of something or someone? It's on your paper also, too. We find ourselves stressed, sick, delayed, procrastination, confused. It is because, spelt that wrong, we refuse to let go of the past. If you're feeling stuck, it is because you can't see ahead of you what God has for you, your destiny in Christ Jesus. If you are feeling any one of those things and many more, like that skit talked about, you notice when she lifted that bag to go over to the other side, what a weight? With all that stuff in it. Listen, there's not a bag big enough to hold your stuff. There isn't, without a doubt. There isn't a bag big enough to hold your stuff because you will find everything. It's almost like we become Velcro and we walk. Sony said something to me at church today. Velcro, stick, offense. Cheryl said something to me, offense. Apostle didn't say good morning to me. Offense, 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 offense. 
until we walk around like this. If I'm dead and I'm crucified with Christ, nothing you say to me can hurt me. Sometimes we look for things to feel sad about. You notice how she didn't want to let go of those chains? We're used to it. And it keeps us from fulfilling our destiny in Christ Jesus. Many of us, especially women, trust in other things and other people to make us happy. It will always be a disappointment. The only one who fulfills that is Christ Jesus. Don't be putting that on your man. No man is Jesus Christ. We thank God for our husbands, but our full fulfillment is in Christ Jesus. Okay? Second one, we speak of the past more than the future. Trigger. When we hear somebody speak of the past, from now on I want you to hold them accountable. I want you to say to them, are you digging? <laughs> really, we need to hold ourselves accountable. You're accountable to your brothers and sisters. You just don't want them to dig up a grave. It stinks. Yes, it does. Number three, we put more validity in our past than the word of God. Well, it says that I could do all things in Christ Jesus. Well, I can't do that because I'm limited to a wheelchair. There was no limitations. There was no disability for her preaching the word today in a skit. She chose to go forward. Four. <laughs> oh, man. When I did this one, I was like, okay, I repent. <laughs> okay, you got me. Always frantic and rushing. And I didn't put this in, but I want you to purposely add it in. And always late. <laughs> I know, it's going to hurt. Apostle will talk to me about that later. <laughs> no, no, he won't. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> See, uh, if you didn't get a chance to listen to Andreas's workshop a couple of weeks yeah, ago, it will help you to decipher whether self is on the throne yeah. and whether God is. Because if God's on the throne, you would be on time and before time, way before time. But we're not going to go there. That's a whole sermon in itself. Number five, we have no clear God-given vision. I don't know what God's called me for. I don't know what my gift is. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But you know what your dad said 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Right? In exact detail. Sometimes we can remember the place he said it. The time, the song that was playing. Um, number six, no actual attainable goals. Michael and Gail bought me this, because you know me, I'm an object lesson person. They bought me this arrow where they came from. They went to the mountains someplace, I don't know. And they bought me this arrow, and it was so prophetic. Because this arrow was created to do one thing. What was it created to do? Hit the target. Without hitting a target, it's just a pretty thing. But its purpose is to hit the, cocket, ca uh, the target. You were created to hit your target. And stick around the prophetic, you'll be, be told that all the time. Okay, seven, hard to say no to good things and yes to God things. We say yes to everything and it may only, it may be a good thing, not a God thing. So we are so spent on the good things that when God says, I want you to do this, we're like, I am exhausted. I can't do it. Just, I'm stressed out. I worked all week. I can't do this. 
When God speaks, we obey. Amen. Okay. Um, eight. Toxic relationships rule our life. Bill's going to be getting into a little bit of that. Toxic foods, toxic relationships. We get drawn by the enemy to relationships that suck the life out of us. Instead of being an edification. In fact, we choose to stay home from church where we would become edified to then call somebody who dumps on us. Come on now. Be with the brethren. Let them encourage you and prophesy into your spirit. No real intimacy or fellowship with Holy Spirit. And Johnny Prophet's going to get in it. If you wanted to read a great book, read his book. Relationship to Fellowship. From Relationship to Fellowship. Okay, uh, next one, Michael. Okay, and I'm going to end with this one. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Seven steps on how to let go. I wrote them down for you so you can't make an excuse. Okay. Number one, recognize. I've got a problem. My storage is full. My storage, my storage. Okay. See, if this is full, your home is going to be full. We're going to be dealing with this at the women's meeting in a couple of weeks. We're going to actually put nuts and bolts on how to organize your house. Because when you organize your house and you put different colors in your house, it shifts you to another season. Yeah. Victoria has a supernatural gift of organization. Very important. Recognize I have a problem. My storage is full. Two. Re or, or, number one is recognize. Number two, realize this. I want you to circle this star and do whatever you got to do. Recognize no thing, not nothing, no thing is attached to a person. Recognize no thing is attached to a person. That person is attached here in your heart, that love, that experience. That's an important thing because many times we keep things because they have great sentimental value, but they send us in a spiral downhill. Three, repent. Repent of holding on to things that keep you from Christ. Four, remove things naturally spiritually, etc. Put nuts and bolts. Actually do. When you go home today, after this, pick a drawer in your house that is cluttered. The bottom of your closet, if things are thrown and things are not organized on the bottom of your closet, just take 15 minutes that's all it takes. It's not a life-changing event, but it is. Take 15 minutes and it'll shift things. Five, this is really important. Replace under Holy Spirit direction. Don't replace it with your old stuff. It would be like me now going over to Apostle's house and putting everything back in storage again. Whatever they have. They have. All their furniture, the whole house back in storage. Isn't that idiotic? Some things need to be gotten rid of or sell them or bless somebody else with them. Six, rejoice in the process. Thank you, Lord, you are delivering me from this. Thank you, Jesus. Don't allow it to be so momentous that you cannot... Function properly. Rejoice. Seven, this is really important. 
Repeat it in every season. I can't tell you how many times I've decluttered my house. And I only got an 800 square foot condo that came from a three bedroom, 1400 square foot house. I am constantly decluttering and getting rid of stuff that does not belong. Because I'm a new me. So that means I need a new place. And I need wide open spaces. Because clutter causes confusion. So repeat in every season that you're in. No matter what it is, repeat in every season. All those processes. All those pro- There's some scriptures underneath that. First Kings with Elijah and Elisha. Matthew in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, Not my will, but your will. First Kings, halt between two opinions. And Romans, I am crucified with Christ. All during today, you're going to be hearing this over and over and over again. To let go of stuff. Let go of people. And asking forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. Whether they receive it or not. So I'm going to call up Bill Merrill. And he is going to deliver a message. And he is going to speak about some of the, again, the nuts and bolts of letting go. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for changing.